Hey guys, welcome back to the Hess Project. I'm John Ortolaza and we're finally here. I'm so excited we get to talk about Cobra Kai Seasons 1 and 2 that aired on uh, YouTube Red in the last couple of years. I am so excited guys. We are on the road to Cobra Kai Season 3 hitting Netflix January 8th, the day before my birthday. So I am really excited for this. Let's get into seasons one and two. So if you guys didn't see my Karate Kid reviews for all five of the films, I had said that I haven't seen any of the Karate Kid films with the exception of Jaden Smith's because I actually saw that growing up in like 2010, 2011. I wasn't exposed to any of it up until a month ago. Cobra Kai recaps the All Valley Tournament from Daniel and Johnny's senior year back in 1984 when Daniel hit the crane kick on Johnny and he was knocked out. And we saw at the end of that film that Johnny got back up, took the trophy from the referee, and directly handed it to Daniel. And he said, you're all right, LaRusso. However, the opening of Cobra Kai recaps that crane kick, shows Johnny fall face flat onto the mat, and doesn't move. He is devastated that he just lost in front of everybody. He was... He was first place for the last couple of years in high school. And his senior year, his final year, he's second place. And all he can remember was an illegal crane kick to the face. Flat down on the mat, swimming in his own defeat. I don't know, maybe it's maybe I'm overthinking things, but I just love to dissect and pick out the symbolism with every part of this show. I love this show, and if you're not watching it, get off my channel, go on Netflix, watch Cobra Kai seasons one and two. In the first episode, we see Johnny's car get absolutely broken, screwed up, so he's gotta go get it fixed. The towing company brings it to LaRusso Auto Group, and it's run by Daniel LaRusso. I did not expect to see him so early in the show. I didn't think it was actually gonna be centered around both Johnny and Daniel. I was very surprised to see that. Again, like I said in my Karate Kid review, I adored Mr. Miyagi a lot more than Daniel LaRusso. And in this show, I like Johnny a lot more than Daniel LaRusso because we start to see the bad qualities of Daniel LaRusso that we saw just a little bit of in the original Karate Kid films. We start to see those take over in this show. And it begins to make you hate Daniel LaRusso. Because it started off with Johnny being the villain in the original film. And now he's kind of like the hero. You see his side. You feel for him. You feel for the rut that he's in. You see the dark side of Daniel LaRusso and how methodical he can really be when he's got power. And he kind of had Mr. Miyagi there to bail him out a lot. They still have a Mr. Miyagi presence. However, they did it in such a brilliant way. I didn't expect this show to do. I really appreciate the layers that have been implemented into the Karate Kid Cobra Kai saga. They are not just the casual 80s hero and then the, the bad boy from Cobra Kai and who knows karate and dated Elizabeth Shue, you lucky bastard. This rivalry, this, this tension between Johnny and Daniel seeps down into their kids. It seeps down into Sam LaRusso, into, uh, what's his name? Robbie Keane, who's, who's uh, Johnny's son. It seeps down into all of them, into Miguel, the people who were once nerds in high school, who have now built the confidence and stood up to their bullies, joined Cobra Kai, and others who were felt left behind and noticed that their once friends became assholes since they joined Cobra Kai. Now they joined Miyagi-Do so they can combat against Cobra Kai. Guys, oh man. It's really turned into a rebellion empire scenario like in Star Wars. We've always seen the empire in Star Wars as the villains, as the bad guys, as no good scoundrels, terrible people. You may have seen Johnny Lawrence as the bad guy in the original film, but in here, he is depicted in some episodes as the good guy. And Daniel LaRusso, who was our hero in the Karate Kid trilogy from the 80s, is a bit of a dick and a bit of an asshole and an evil, evil person in this show. It shows that. It shows that both sides can cross and can marinate into different different aspects of personality and, and just 
you know, really dig into the worst parts of a human mind and really tear someone down without thinking about it. Daniel LaRusso really does some shady stuff in this in this show to just get back at Johnny for being a part of Cobra Kai. He hates Johnny for what John Kreese and Terry Silver did to him in the third film because for some reason Daniel thinks that just because you're a part of Cobra Kai you agreed with every single thing that happened from Cobra Kai and everything that Cobra Kai has done in their entirety of existence. It is some naive, narrow-minded thinking that you see on Twitter these days. You see it happen in this show, but with obviously more interesting topics. Not about presidents and bullcrap like that. I don't care about that crap. I care about karate and people kicking ass and two grown men beefing over each other for something that happened in, in high school. I know these episodes are like 30 minutes long, sometimes even less. They range between 24 to 30 minutes. Some of them got a little bit over 30, but when I first put in that first episode, I was watching it consistently. I don't think there was a single day that went by where I wasn't watching an episode of Cobra Kai. I had to get to the end. I had to know what happened in the next episode. I wanted more of it. I wanted to see what's gonna happen. What kind of deception is happening next? It was just pure awesomeness and badass, as Johnny would say. Guys, Cobra Kai is one of the most special series out there. It is just so good. The storytelling is on point. And like I said, all of these characters that you see, all the children, all of the high schoolers that have been influenced by their teachers of Johnny and Daniel, and you see that tension build into, like, there, they were, there was already tension with high schoolers as is, but the tension built from Johnny and Daniel really does influence the choices and the decisions made by these teenagers, and it leads to catastrophic events. The finale of season one, the whole tournament, the final fight between Robbie Keane and Miguel Diaz, that whole fight was just so good. You saw Miguel fighting and representing Cobra Kai, the new Cobra Kai that Johnny was trying to dub it as, fighting Johnny's son, Robbie, who was trained by Daniel LaRusso. They have beef with each other already, I think, because Miguel saw uh, Robbie with his girl, Sam, and thought they were, you know, tension, high schoolers. What, am I, what, what can we do? What can we do? <laughs> so we saw that play out as they were hard hitting action between the two in that last fight you see Johnny over there like he's he's beside himself he doesn't know what to do in this scenario he feels really bad he was not there for his son and he sees that he may have led Miguel down a wrong path and it it, it that, is, that comes to fruition when he attacks Robbie Keane's injury in this final fight. Very similar, very reminiscent to Johnny attacking Daniel's injury in the original film. He sees what he just did was no different than what Kreese did in the original film. No different. Absolutely no different. And when Miguel wins the tournament, wins the tournament, the only... A glance of happiness you get from that moment is when his mom and and his uh, nana they come and and they're so proud of they're so proud of Miguel. Everyone in the crowd is cheering for him. Of course, the whole Cobra Kai crew is cheering for him. Johnny doesn't care. Johnny doesn't feel like that Cobra Kai earned it. He doesn't feel like his Cobra Kai earned it. He feels like that was just another trophy for John Kreese's Cobra Kai. The final scene of that season, of course, shows the return of John Kreese, and thus begins the best part about Cobra Kai, and it is ultimately what was happening in the original films. John Kreese is the venom that has infected both Johnny and Daniel. He is the hatred that isn't there, but he makes it a presence there. He makes it known. He makes it a mission to win this war. When you talk about war and talk about soldiers, like it's funny, but this show really does do a better job at hiding the ridiculousness of the Karate Kid saga. Season finale of season two, the big high school fight, 
Granted, yes, Sam and Tori, who Tori is uh, Miguel's new girlfriend, she was jealous that she saw Sam and Miguel kiss while they were drunk at a party. So she goes on the PA system at school. First day of school, by the way. <laughs> Says, I'm coming for you, bitch. Yeah, it's... Look, 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 look. It's a little more believable than a bunch of grown-ass men trying to murder Hillary Swank. However, every single moment after that, when the fight began, it just made up for everything. It made up for everything. You saw Tori and Sam fighting through the halls, Miguel and Robbie fighting through the halls, all of Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do just battling it out. It's so fun, so wacky, so entertaining to see all of this go down and everyone just throwing at it. I can remember how I felt when I first watched it. It was just a random afternoon, I put it on. I did not expect this season finale to hit so hard. Like, my food was getting cold and I'm just sitting there, I'm like, what? I was so mesmerized by what I was seeing, like, I didn't expect it. And all of these actors, all these kids really pulled off this fighting. Maybe they were a little too advanced for their teaching at the moment, but dude, I don't care. Suspend some disbelief. We would already do it with a bunch of these grown ass men beefing about a tournament that happened in 1984. So I can suspend a little disbelief now. This was the best part of the, se of the whole show in my opinion. This high school fight was so awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome, it was filled with Action and emotion, of course, we see the tragic fall off the big balcony onto the rail guard of Miguel. He's critically injured at the end of this season. And guys, I was in I was in tears. I really was in tears in this scene. I did not expect the show to go this route, to hit this hard. I really didn't expect that. But you can't help but feel this is kind of necessary for what the story is trying to uh, illustrate. There are casualties for the actions that Johnny and Daniel have taken throughout this show. And Miguel, unfortunately, was one of those casualties. And you can see in this one scene in that last episode, Johnny and Daniel are riding down an elevator in that last uh, episode, but they're just facing forward the whole time their facial expressions says it all. They didn't have to say a word. They knew what is happening between the, us two is tearing these kids apart. And we need to solve something. We need to, we need to resolve this because we can't afford to have a bunch of other kids to damn near kill themselves over this stupid rivalry. Because it is about us. Look to the future. Stop making it about past characters. At, at its core, yes, it focuses on the kids, but is at its core, the rivalry between Johnny and Daniel infecting these kids. I wish I could talk more about Cobra Kai. <laughs> more in depth, but I'd be here for over an hour. Leave your comments down below if you are a fan of Cobra Kai. If you're a fan of Karate Kid, Post your comments down below. Let me know what you think of the franchise. Who's your favorite character? Which one's your favorite movie? Are you watching Cobra Kai? Don't make me tell you again. Go watch Cobra Kai. Go watch it. Leave a like if you enjoyed my video, my, my little bit of an analysis of Cobra Kai and the Karate Kid films. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be sure to stick around, guys, because there's more to come.